Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, we're returning to the cage. Coming up on Saturday night, Bellator 154 as he takes on Cyborg Santos is Syed Awad, who is 18 and 7 in his career, stepping up here on short notice to take on a welterweight matchup. Syed, appreciate the time. Obviously, when this this fight was announced, I think that that caught a lot of people's eyes. The fact of it's at 170 pounds. Is this just simply, hey, it's a short notice opportunity, so you're stepping up at 170 or is your future at 170 pounds? No, no, no. First, I want to say what's, uh, what's up, Jason. Thank you for having me. And uh, no, it was just one of those things that you know I, I've been asking for a fight, and it usually takes me a good you know two to three months to make my weight solid, like at 155. So um, I started dieting just in case I got a call, and finally, I, you know, I called him. I said, "Hey, if there's a if anybody falls through, you know, I'll fight at 170. I mean, unless I have time." I'll, I'll take a fight at 55, but if it's short notice, I'll fight at 7, and then sure enough, you know, I got a call, and I, I took it right away. I mean, obviously, this is your first fight since, uh, the, you know, August last year. What, what's been going on with you since that last fight? Uh, I had a broken hand, so I was just sidelined for a while. I had surgery. They put a plate in my hand, and then uh, and then after I got that off, I, I had a baby, and then i have been training. <laughs> Congratulations on the baby. I mean, when you when you have that a broken hand, I mean, is it one of those things that it totally keeps you out of the gym, or is it just one of those things of okay, well, I can't throw a a punch, I can throw a kick, or I can work on other things? No, it kept me out of the gym completely because I, I broke it completely across. So I had a they had to do surgery, put a plate in there, and you, you know how casts are. I don't know if you've ever had one. Once you sweat in a cast, it's like you're screwed. You know, you start itching. You it's like it's like a nightmare, and it starts smelling. So. I had to just kind of relax and force myself not to train, and just, uh, just I just did a lot of studying, you know, just did a lot, watched a lot of YouTube videos, and just kind of, you know, I'll, I'll be at the gym just watching. But after, as soon as I got it off, right away, I was, uh, I was training and just watching. Out. I wasn't supposed to train, but I was just not using that my left hand. I was doing a lot of like kicks, a lot of punches with the right hand, just little movement drills until I was able to use my hand. In ter- when you, when you had that time where you couldn't train, was is that like one of the worst times as a fighter when you're like, man, I, I just want to, I get in there, but I can't. Oh, it definitely is. It, it definitely is because you know, like you, you you're just counting the time. You're like, okay, I'm gonna have this on for a month and a half, and then right when I get it off, I'm not supposed to be doing anything because you know you don't want to mess it up. You have to go through therapy, but as soon as you get it off, you, you, you it's like you just go straight to the gym. And like I couldn't even bend my hand for at least two months after I couldn't make a fist. And uh, I was in the gym. I don't know what I was, I was doing. Something. But I was in the gym, just working, working on my footwork, working on whatever. You're just, just you know, working around it because when you're gone so long, it just sucks. It sucks bad. And obviously, there's a fight coming up here. I, and I, I've talked to you know fighters who you know when they're you know training, especially when one of their main training partners has a fight around the same time. They they talk about the advantages that opens up. And obviously, short notice fight. You know, I know you were helping Georgie prepare for his fight coming up next week. But, uh, you know, how much of, you know, just maybe being in a training camp with Georgie has kind of really, you know, helped you out for this fight? Yeah, it, it, it did. It definitely did, which um, it, it couldn't come at a, you know, more perfect time. Because, you know, I'm always training, you know, besides, you know, being out because of my broken hand. But as soon as I was able to come back, I was in the gym training. And then uh, he had his fight. So I made sure I was there for a little bit of the overtime, you know, like times that I probably wouldn't be there. Uh, I made sure I pushed myself to go because I, I had out with him. You know, I was in his camp, and that's just how we how we do. If I have my camp, he's there for me, and when he has his camp, I'm there for him. And the opponent here, uh, Cyborg Santos, obviously he he made an immediate impact in Bellator just a couple of weeks ago when when he stopped Brandon Ward in 30 seconds. I, I know it's. I mean, you can look back at that film, that film, but there's not much to look at. So, so how do you prepare for a guy like Cyborg who, you know, prior to that, you know, he'd fought back in January before that he had been away from some time. So how do you prepare for a short nose fight against a guy that you really, you're looking at a lot older film on him? Yeah, it's not so much. You, 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 I have time to prepare for him. It's more about just going out there and fighting my fight. You know, I, I know what he brings, you know, and he, he fought the same way since he first started fighting. And that was like 97, I believe his first fight or something. And he, he hasn't really changed much. You know, he's still the brawler that throws kicks. And, you know, he, he's dangerous on the floor if you go down. So, um, you know, I'm just I'm just, I'm just, just ready ready for that. I'm not judging him off his last fight. I know he has jiu-jitsu. But um, I know he's just that brawler that likes to throw kicks. So that's what I kind of uh, got my mindset around. Do you 
is it maybe more of a psychological advantage of essentially you're coming to this fight, you don't got to cut much weight, but obviously he's got to cut a lot of weight to get down 170 pounds. Is that more psychological than anything else as an advantage in this fight? Yeah, I'll, I'll say so. Cause I mean, I, I train with a lot bigger guys. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, guys that are bigger, they're a lot stronger and they, they do have their advantages, but then I also have my advantages. You know, I know I'm faster than them. I know, you know I mean? I, I, I can move around. I, I, if I get him to scramble, I get him to get tired faster. And, you know, so, and he's not really that big of a 70 pounder either. You know, I think we're same height, almost same, same reach. I think, of course, he's probably going to still be bigger. Just the fact that, you know, he cuts the seventies, but I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I mean, I've, I've had too many fights this year. I'm worried about that. Do you almost, I mean, obviously you were on a, a run there before your, your loss to Pitbull. Do you kind of just view this as kind of like, um, a reintroduction to say, Hey guys, I'm still here. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm coming after that 155 pound tile. I mean, is that, is that kind of the view of this fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm stepping up, and uh, and uh, I, I know this is a fight that too many people weren't really lined up to take. But yeah, I don't, I'm a, I'm a fighter. You know what I mean? And when they called me for it, I said, "Dude, I have to take this fight. This is a fight that I know. If I was sitting back watching, I, I would want to watch this fight. So I, I had to take it. You know, I'm just excited about it. You know, obviously, there's, and I'm sure you're you're well aware of this. There's fans online who are. They're not exactly thrilled about this fight card because because of the changes. But what would your message to them be about why they need to tune in on Saturday night? Well, if they're real fans, they'll know who who Cyborg is and they'll see what kind of fight, uh, what kind of fighter he really is. And then you know, and if they're fans of Bellator, they they'll see what kind of fighter I am. You know, when I first came in the tournament, what, what I like to do. So like, like I said, if they're real fans, then then they'll be excited about it. If, if they're not, if they're just people that are just tuning in and they watch fights here and there that they don't really know so you know for, for those guys i really don't care about them to be honest uh, another little thought about this fight coming up is what california is doing you're a california resident and they're really uh, attacking weight cutting what's your thoughts as a fighter of what california and some other commissions are trying to do to you know kind of you know make sure that guys are hydrated on come fight night I mean, it's a good thing, but the way I look at it is if the guys are going to cut, they're going to cut regardless, you know. And if they try to do the hydration test, it's just going to make guys cut earlier, which is probably better for them because then they're healthier. But uh, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know how they're going to be able to monitor that. It's a, it's a lot of money they're going to spend to go and do random weight checks on all the fighters, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I know I know UFC does that for the, for the like, drug testing. I'm sure they're spending a lot of money to do those random drug tests, and I can't imagine doing a random test on all the fighters for uh, for weight cutting. You know, what I mean, to check their hydration levels. So I don't know how how that's going to work out. I know they banned IVs, but even then, I mean, are you going to be with the fighter 24 seven after weighing to make sure he doesn't take an IV? You know, you know what I mean. It, it, do you think banning IVs is is part of the solution? <sighs> I don't think so because I mean I think uh, guys are still going to cut because it's not like it's not like they need the IV to cut. Yeah, the IV helps after, but I mean guys in their head they they're just worried about making the weight. At the end of the day, as long as they make the weight, that's all they care about. And if they can't use an IV, they're still going to cut cut dramatically to make the weight, and then it's probably going to mess them up more fighting. And, of course, uh, Bellator 154 coming up on Saturday night from the SAP Center in San Jose, California. By the way, early start time on Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Spike for the main card. Syed will be a part of that five-fight main card. Of course, headlined by Phil Davis taking on King Mo Lawal. Syed, as always, I appreciate time. Good luck in the fight, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.